Hello again. I can't help but wonder sometimes just how long it takes immigrants to this country to become as British as those whose families have lived here for hundreds or thousands of years. I'm not talking now about legal niceties because I know people who have been granted British citizenship and yet can barely speak English. I'm talking of something else, um, of Britishness, if you like. This is not easy to define. I strongly suspect that many people who have come to live in this country, even those who have passports or were actually born here, owe, don't own the same allegiance to this country as I do myself. In fact, of course, I know this, and so do many viewers. I've encountered young men who describe themselves as Pakistani or Jamaican, even though they were born in London, because they feel that their parents' ethnicity or nationality is more important to them than Britain, the country in which they were born. I've spoken of this before, but I was prompted to revisit the topic by the revelation that the Chancellor of the Exchequer's wife lives in Downing Street and has another three homes in England, but does not have any firm plans to live permanently in this country. She is a foreigner, in other words. Rishi Sunak was the child of foreigners, and I doubt if they had any kind of allegiance to Britain either. His mother was born in Tanganyika, but evidently never regarded herself as being a citizen of that country. Like many Indians, including Rishi Sunak's wife, they drift about the world, making their home where it seems most economically or socially advantageous, without seeing themselves as belonging to the countries in which they live. The Chancellor's wife says that she has no intention of settling permanently in Britain. And this is what she claims in order to be eligible for the non-domiciled status and thus pay no British taxes at all. She says that she intends to go back to live in India at some point. The fact that Rishi Sunak married her indicates that he too will be retiring to India, I suppose, when he's finished raising our taxes and screwing up the economy. Looking around me, where I live, I see many Romanians and Bulgarians who have acquired British passports. A family of them live next door to me. I enjoy excellent relations with them, but they are not by any definition other than the strictly legal British. They speak Bulgarian at home, and so do their children. They return to Bulgaria every summer, and all their relatives, friends and all the visitors to their home are Bulgarian. I have never heard anything but Bulgarian being spoken in their back garden, never English. Nobody but a fool would claim that these people are as British as I am. I cannot quite get this point across sometimes to friends who read The Guardian, which is puzzling because I think that I have reason and logic on my side here. As I say, even when children are born to African families living in this country, they do not generally regard themselves as British, they call themselves African. It must surely not have escaped notice that people born in this country to immigrant families are more likely to adhere to um, other loyalties, for example the doctrine of Islamism, than ordinary British people are. It may perhaps be recalled that three of the bombers who set off suicide bombs on the London Underground in 2005 were born in this country and were theoretically as British as I am. The fourth was a Jamaican who also had British nationality. Those who murdered Lee Rigby were also born in Britain, as was Shamima Begum. It is my belief that it takes at least three or four generations to become British in any real sense of the word. That is to say as British as those of us whose families are firmly rooted in this country since the 16th century as mine is. None of this means that I have any prejudice against or dislike of immigrants or foreigners. It rather means that I acknowledge that they are likely to be different to me. They think differently often speak different languages and have a different religion from mine, 
and they're less likely to be attached to the country than I am. This has, of course, grave implications for community cohesion, but that's another matter. Thinking of Rishi Sunak reminds us that more than a quarter of Boris Johnson's cabinet fall into these, this particular category of, shall we say, questionable loyalty. Priti Patel, Alok Sharma, Saeed Javid, Kwasi Kwatem and Nadim Zahawi are all in a similar case. They are led in government by a man who wasn't born in Britain and has, shall we say, an international background. If I were a dyed-in-the-wool chauvinist and little Englander, as some people have suggested in the comments here, this would be enough to make me more than a little uneasy. For I have to ask if England means as much to such people currently in government as it does to me.